you doing, girl? Sleeping? Hey, guys. Today is a spray session day, and it's been a minute since I've done one. Um, that's because of all the orders there. Um, but today's going to be fun. Uh, it's not going to be a normal beginning level to intermediate level. This is one that might present a challenge to you guys. It's one that I've done a couple of times, but I have a run of three. But today, we're going to do the European Hornet. This is going to be a hand-cut stencil day. So you can do a couple of things with this. Um, because you can see, uh, my expectation here, let me start with that. My expectation here is you guys already know how to put base coats on. You guys already know how to fill in over top base coats. So this started out with, number one, a white opaque primer. Number two, I added bright yellow over top of the white. And it's uh, very easy. I'm not throwing curveballs or giving you guys paints that you may not have. This is all Createx stuff. So inexpensive. So this is a bright yellow, a 5114. And then with a little mask, I added a phone call. Hang on. Okay, interrupted by the phone call. If you guys want to know what the phone call was and you want to hear me rant about it, you can hang out at the end of the video and I'll probably put it in the end because it's a really frustrating issue. Um, anyways, it, it's not worth keeping all you guys waiting for this, this bait though. So, transparent deep red. Uh, my, my expectation is you guys know how to do basic stuff. So for this mask to put on the, the deep red, all I did was I folded this around the head of the bait and I used the gill plates on these baits as a marker. Real easy to do. It also keeps you straight and lined up and then just pull that around. Make sure that your yellow paint is dry and heat set very well before you put your mask on or else you're going to be pulling old paint up. So that's that's one thing. I did a regular spray at about 35 PSI to make sure that this covered. And then I let it sit overnight. So that's all I've done. I've done three things. White primer, bright yellow transparent over that, let it dry, heat set it, let it dry, and then yesterday afternoon before I started the rest of my sprays I masked it and I used this. Now you guys may not have this particular weight of cardboard so for this purpose you can even use thicker paper. Any any type of paper that's going to hold up for like maybe one spray session you can do. But what I've done and I think I've shown you this picture on Facebook and Instagram before and it's what I used to gauge my last set of European Hornets on but I've got a couple of orders that uh, actually one order that's in there twice and then a couple other orders where they've requested the European Hornet so it's easier for me to just go ahead and do a run of them all at once and then I don't have to worry about it anymore so just make sure you know what quantities you're dealing with you can do it all at one time this is sort of the same size as the end of this bait. Imagine that. So what I did was the picture I found on the internet, I'll leave that link above or below, probably below. That's where it is, right? Um, it, it depends on if you're on a smartphone or if you're on a laptop or a desktop. But I made sure that this was going to be about the same size. And if you look at that, it is. So then, all we're going to do is we're going to come with a pencil, go over top of whatever paper you have, we're going to make an imprint, and then we can use that to gauge our stencils on, if that makes sense. I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay, so if you guys notice, this picture is a about the same length as this 2.5, the back end of this 2.5 right here. And, and I kind of set it up that way. All I did was I found the picture I wanted and then I uh, set the, the printer to fill the page. And, and that's pretty good. 
Um, obviously, it's a monster version of a Hornet, and if I ever saw a Hornet that was actually this size, I'd probably kirk out. Luckily, they're not that big yet. They keep eating GMOs, but hey, that's a whole different conversation. So this right here is going to be transformed onto whatever type of cardboard or paper you have. You can use paper. You're only going to use it one time. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over this, kind of set it towards the edge, and then take a writing implement, a pen. doesn't even have to be a ballpoint pen that works. You just need to make that impression underneath of this. Sort of like tracing, but a little different because normally you would set tracing paper on top and this is just used to make the indentation underneath. And then completely make this and there you go. And you can see my, my purple pen here <laughs> isn't even really writing. But what it's done, when you pull this up, you guys see that indentation? Hopefully you guys can see it enough to know that we will be able to take our X-Acto knife now and cut that out. Okay. Move this paper for just a second. All I'm going to do here trace this with the knife where that pen made that indentation. And that's it. Pop that out. And now we have an indentation that almost is identical, there you go. Now it's a little bit lopsided there, but we're going to use a little bit of, of light spray technique here on this. And again, the color pattern is simple, it's three colors. It's the yellow, it's your deep red, and black. This does use black on it could probably do a black magenta. We're going to do straight black on this because those are colors that I think everybody has. Tip that back up. Sorry about that noise. And now we want to look at where our red ends. We've got a, a little collar here on the head. So more than likely what I'll do with that is come in here and this is an adaptation, so again, it can be your interpretation of what this should look like, but you want to kind of get it close. You can use the same thing for this stencil and make that again. Then we have another little section to cut out. Don't want to do it right over top of the other one because effectively you can even trim the edges around this to have two separate stencils on this. So now we have that little black area that we're going to put right on the crown of the head. And the cool thing about this is we can even use what's already here. If you guys can see this, there's already a little crown started. So this is not going to be a difficult one at all. We're going to bring this right to there. Maybe down just a little bit. Cover that because we want to keep a little bit of red behind it and then we'll have the crown behind it. So those are the two things we're going to do. You can also count how many 
segments are on this bee's body. There are one, two, three, four behind this section. So once we do this, take your pen, and if I'm kind of scattered here, I just I'm trying to get you to line up where this is gonna be. One, two, three, four. And that's where you're gonna spray your segments after we do this part. One of the things that I always encourage you guys to do is to try your patterns out on paper before you put them on your lure. So you want to practice shading. Make sure your pressure is low enough. It should be between 8 and 10. If you can do pressure under 5 and not get jammed up, then that would be preferable. The lower pressure, the better on sprays like this. And there you go. That's what it's going to look like. One thing I might do before we put this on is kind of even out this point because this point looks a little bit different than that point. That's a good point. That's a good point. That looks exactly the way it does on the bead. This one looks like I've chopped this off. So I'm going to try and go out a little bit more on that and give it more of a point. Get that rough edge off. And again, it does not have to be perfect. Really, it does not. Let's see how this one looks. I'd say that's a better point. So there we go. We'll bring that, transfer that over. And we're going to be working up to back because if we did this first and then came and laid this over top, we're going to get paint all over and then we're going to smudge it. So we're going to do this back section first. The other thing that I'm noticing is that this is not really a good straight edge. So another trick, this is, can, I guess, could go in the tips and tricks. If you want to straighten out one of your edges, grab a little bit of masking tape. Because masking tape has a straight edge. And we're going to use that straight edge here. that. We want to come back and do it on the other side as well. Just so we have a better cover here and one that's not going to get all gummy on one side don't want it to stick basically. So now we have that straight line that we can lay right on that mask. Get that out from behind. We are going to do all three baits at once. Get that curved over. a little bit darker and that should have left a pretty good impression got just a little bit to clean up here and that shouldn't be hard to put in just follow along that line and there you have it and you can come on to your next one Trim just a little bit of this off. Now for those of you 
that have cry cut or can do the stencil. You can probably find a pretty decent hornet pattern and then just transfer that onto an image on your film. And then come back. And just add that in real light. There you go. And then do the same thing on your last one. And that one actually hit that right on the head. Now, a little bit more to touch up here. There we go. Gonna let that sit and get happy here. Shorten this collar up just a little bit. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. Good. thing on this one. And the same thing on this one. And there we have it. Go ahead and heat set this real quick. Always remember to oscillate. Keep that heat moving. Now we have a small section here. I'm going to use the bottom because that is a true straight edge. This was the bottom of this obviously was machine cut. So that's what we're going to do. Now if you notice, there's just a little tiny black line right through here. It's very thin. So as we're making these segments, there's going to be a little bit of overspray on this. But we're going to come down this time now that we've heat set this. Again, because if we go back this way, we're going to be smearing paint as we go. So we're going to come back from this tail section and just work our way down. And the easiest way that I know to tell you how to do that <coughs> is to lay this right on the dot that we made. Remember, we made that dot. And you want to spray mostly on the piece of paper. almost as if you were doing a cross segment. Now we're starting to take shape, it's starting to look like an insect. It's going to look a little wonky until you start getting your details in. And then once you start getting your details in, this pattern is really going to come together for you. I was skeptical at first, too. And 
there you go. So why didn't I go all the way around the bait? Well, because of this. You guys really can't see this well because the leg is in the way. But if you've ever really looked or studied a hornet before or a bee, this segment, the top segment comes like this, but then the bottom segment folds into it. So we're going to need to do that if we're going to pull this off. And then it just, it kind of staggers. So these sections, which unfortunately is hidden by the leg, or else you'd be able to see it, is on the insect like that. And no, that's not going to be as hard as y'all think. We're going to take this and we're going to kind of curve it. And then we're going to do the same thing that you would maybe do even on a crawl. As long as we have that flow. See where I'm going with this? All right, we're going to flip that over to this side. And do the same thing. So yeah, the B segment is very similar to a cross segment in that they kind of crisscross. And just continue going down. We want to come back with our straight line. And make sure that we're getting these in the middle of the segments. Because that's where that crisscross is. And one more. Now we've got our basic lines in. Set the baits off to the side for a second. And that's one thing that, just to keep the perspective in mind, is that insects and Crustaceans are similar in that they're all segmented bodies, okay? So just remember it's not as difficult as you might think that it is. This next step though, we're going to go back to our little straight line here. For this one though, we're going to cut in to this edge. And we're going to get this out of the way. Grab our X-Acto knife. As you can see, those little segments there. We're going to pull a point out. Just pop that out. Pop 
this one out. And pop this one out. So when you're done, you've got something that looks like that. You see where I'm going with that. Now we're gonna very we're gonna very lightly spray the middle part first. And you wanna kinda of be trailing off with your brush as you come down. Okay, so we have all those points together. We're gonna to come behind it. This is why it's essential to have a light touch on this. We'll do the same thing, kind of wipe that down with the glove. Do the same thing with this guy. So now we have these back segments. Well, the same segments that are on the bee's back are also on the hornet's belly. Not on the back one, but move down here. Just stay in the middle. Keep that pressure low. Run all the way down. Okay. Keep it in a straight line as best you can. Now you have it on that side. Come back over in the other one. And this is why the pressure's got to be light, folks. Now we have the belly segments. I'll show you guys that. On to the next step. Now the next thing you guys are going to notice on this is that this area in here on the underbelly of the bee on the first segment, actually the second segment, first being its head, is all pretty much dark. That's the easy part. We can go ahead and just kind of shade that in. do that on and it can overlap a little bit there's no issue there do that on all three now for this next step I'm going to pull the one off behind it since I'm going to be spraying kind of been goofing around there is a little tiny amount of hair Bees have hair follicles on their bellies, on their midriff section, the second section right here, this segment. They also have it on their legs. To represent that, with this, we're just going to be using a fan brush, similar to what we would do with a rat. And we're going to be very light in our presentation. We're not going to do much at all. We just kind of want to get it behind the head here. So we've got our pressure on about 15. I'm just going to shoot this one time in one direction and that's it. 
and then flip it around to the other side. Do the same thing. And again, this represents the legs and the hair follicles that you would normally see on a bee. Flip that back around if you want to get a little bit more. And that's it. Now before we get these eyes in, we need to do leg segments. And the leg segments are pretty much in the same shade, same color, as the red. So I've pulled out my deep red again. I have cut a leg segment. And now, we need to lay it in as best we can. So the first one will go like this. The next one will go behind it because if you notice the way they look, it's completely different. The front segment is attached to go forward, then the middle comes back and the back leg goes back. So we want to start right here let's give it a light spray dab that off and we'll come back and almost exactly where the first one was put on. We're going to do this back one. Or the middle segment. There we go. And then the other one is behind that. So we'll start there. <laughs> and there's your legs. How cool is that? We just kind of want to give it a quick outline. We'll do this on both sides. Just to get those segments in. There we go. Same with the other side. Again, it doesn't have to be a full, but you want to represent that there's segments there. legs. Before we clear coat, we got to get the eyes on. Always add in that 
drop of super glue. A little goes a long way. These are six millimeter eyes. There we go. Tomorrow. And since we've gone over clear coat a lot of times on this channel, I decided that we were not going to do that on this one. This is your finished product. This is my version of the European Hornet. I hope you guys have enjoyed this build. It is a bit of a challenge to do, to pull off. If you guys have any questions or comments, or you'd like some additional details that um, you'd like to learn more about, leave me a message, drop me a line in the comments below, and I will be happy to answer them as soon as I possibly can. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks again, as always, for hanging out on the channel and spending a little bit of time. It's always good company, and I appreciate all of you guys. We'll see you soon. Happy casting. I usually don't go on rants with anybody um, or about anybody. It's not really my thing. But in this particular situation, I've had issues, and I don't know if I've expressed this before, maybe on a Facebook post within the last couple of years, but I used to love DirecTV. Um, they offered a fantastic service. Uh, they came out with 4K. They still offer 4K. As an entity unto itself, it was great. It was really good. I loved it. And then they merged with AT&T. And I gotta tell you guys, uh, <laughs> it's been a monster to deal with uh, ever since. The bill keeps going up. They keep giving you all these promises that they're gonna give you credit and credit. And you never see it. You never see it. I've, can I've canceled NFL and baseball three or four times in the past three years and they keep tacking it on and tacking it on and they keep trying to add it back in so finally I was fed up I'm like screw it we're canceling it I canceled it and every day since I've I've canceled it because the subscription runs out on the 2nd of June today is May 28th I, I'm really sorry that I'm bitching about this but it's just oh it's so frustrating Every single day since I canceled the subscription, they've called me. They're, they're not going to get my business back. You know what, folks? I love fishing. That's one of the only reasons I kept the subscription. And I was a Game of Thrones. Um, for not, just a freak for Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is over, so I don't need HBO. And I, nobody really needs cable TV or, or satellite TV to begin with. And now, there are so many options with smart TVs. So many. And even with free, I mean, Antenna TV, it ain't bad because what do you really need? Uh, maybe people are drawn to, I, I'm not. I would much rather be creating in here. And, and that's just me. I can't speak for anybody else. But let me tell you something. Between cell phone and the direct TV subscription, it's over $300 a month. And that's ridiculous. It's They're bleeding you dry. So my only thought there is look at other stuff spend less time on the dang TV and more time out in the wild and in the outdoors and you'll be happy.